we're starting with something that's new to us. Now, it's not new. A couple of guys sitting around a table talking about the Bible. That's been going on for a long time. But what we're going to do is take a section of Scripture that we're going to summarize on Sunday mornings at Calvary Chapel, Santa Barbara. And we're going to take these opportunities over video to talk about it in greater depth because there's some real nuggets here that we don't want to miss. What we're talking about is Exodus chapters 21, 22, and 23, these laws given to Israel after Moses went up to receive the laws on Mount Sinai. Uh, so set the stage for us. Nate, Dave Wally, give us the, the idea here. Well, we're looking at Israel coming out of slavery, out of Egypt, uh, arriving to uh, Mount Sinai, and, uh, and it's this pretty crazy scene. The, the mountain is shaking, there's thundering, there's light, there's a trumpet sounding. It's pretty intense. And it was there, right, that, that God audibly spoke the Ten Commandments to the entire nation of Israel, and they heard it from God. So it's important for us to remember, that's how the Ten Commandments were delivered, audibly from God to Israel down at the foot of the mountain. And then after that, the people react and say, we don't want to hear from God anymore. What, what did they say? What do they want Moses to do? You go up there. You go up. If we hear him, we're going to die. Right. It was like this real separation. You go, Moses, represent us. So what we have in Exodus chapters 21, 22, and 23 is these laws that were specifically given to Moses as he went back up the mountain to receive it. And what we are sort of planning on doing is just going through these in a series of short videos, taking a look at it piece by piece and get an idea of what these laws are, what they mean for Israel back then, and what we can gather from them for our lives today. So let's say, so just set the stage with this brief first video. Exodus chapter 21, verse 1, what's it say? Here we go. Now these are the judgments which you shall set before them. Okay, well, uh, who's the you? Moses. Who's the them? Israel. Israel. So God spoke to Moses, told them that he was going to give them laws that they were to set before them. And what's the sense here? I mean, for, for my study, for my research, this sounds like case law that God was delivering to the judges of Israel so that they would know how to rightly decide matters that came before them for dispute. Yeah, it seems very practical. Practical living. What are the things to live by that God has set before the nation for them to, to carry out? Everyday sort of problems from high crimes to employment disputes to all kinds of things. We, we sort of made a list of, of the kind of things that are covered in the next chapters. David? Yeah, it, it goes uh, employment law regarding the treatment of servants, murder, manslaughter, and violent assault, liability for one's animals and responsibility for the animals of others, theft, responsibility, and restitution, rape, dowry, and the value of women's virginity, idolatry and sorcery, treatment of disadvantaged people in society, money and property lending, uh, justice, and equal standing before the law. It's something, isn't it? And I think when you summarize this law, you see how wise it is. You see how prudent it is. What important instructions, I think especially, what, why did Israel in particular need this law? Well, they, they were just a, a brand new nation. They had just come out of slavery. How are they going to live? How are they going to uh, be a society? How are they going to create community? Well, it wasn't this idea that God was going to, hey, this is how you're going to do it. Here's some guidelines how to do it. This is what's going to set it up before them. So God gives these instructions to the, the judges of Israel that he wanted the whole nation to know. This wasn't a secret law just for the judges. But these were the principles on which they would administer justice in the nation of Israel. Here's a question that I have. was just the difference between a judge and a priest. How would you define the two? Well, wouldn't you say that the priest had a ceremonial function that the judge didn't have? If you had a dispute, um, the neighbor's ox um, injured my property. You wouldn't go to a priest to decide that. You'd go to one of these judges who were instructed according to these principles. Now, we do need to make a little bit of a differentiation between the idea of a judge as it would later come in the book of Judges. That has more of an idea of a heroic leader. What we're thinking more is just the classic judge, you know, the guy with the black robe and, you know, who decides the cases. That's what we're looking at. So they set these laws before them, and in the following videos, we're going to take a look at it piece by piece. But we kind of have, just as a reflection, these three classic um, uh, ideas or understandings of what the law is all about, how it's relevant to us today. What, what are some of those? Well, you have the idea of uh, as a guardrail. To, to keep 
culture from going off the rails. Definitely. Okay. You mentioned uh, this idea of the law as a mirror. What do you see in the mirror? Yourself. It shows us. And how's that look? <laughs> not not very nice right now. Yeah, but, that's right. You know. <laughs> okay, so you got the guardrail to, to, to keep society from self-destruction. You've got the mirror so that we can see our own sinfulness. And, and then what's the third aspect? It was, wasn't a, a, a guidebook. A guidebook to, to give us principles and ideas from the heart and the mind of God to show us how he would want to live. And, and so I think this is a good sort of wrap-up for us. Anything else before we conclude well, here? Well, I guess the question we always ask is, uh, Old Testament, we got to ask ourselves, where is Jesus? Well, look, this is just one verse. But wouldn't you say as a good lead-in to this law, you'd say there's two things. First of all, we got to remind ourselves, Jesus is the ultimate judge, is he not? He's the one who's going to judge the whole earth. And, and this is just something sober that we have to think about Jesus. I think that oftentimes in the Christian environment that we have, we think of Jesus in a lot of terms as savior, as friend, as helper, and all those are valid. But he's a judge also, and he's, he's passionate about justice. That's one thing. Uh, one other way, and I guess we could conclude with this, is that these are sort of principles. It's case law, precedent for Israel, how they should live and decide disputes. Wouldn't you say that Jesus is our ultimate precedent, our ultimate case law? We look to him and we seek to be not followers of Jesus. Look, we're not anti-law, we're not anti-Moses, but we're not followers of Moses. We are followers of Jesus. And, and that's where it comes. We look to him to be our guide, our rule, our, our law.